students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Hungary. I hope everybody is having a good weekend so far, staying productive, staying healthy. This is a members chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch. We will have an all chat class in 90 minutes that will target speaking, specifically speaking part three. To become a member of our channel, click the join button next to the subscribe button. Welcome, Carolina. Hi, Abhishek. I hope you're both doing great. And I'm sure many members will be joining us soon. Uh, again, this is a reading section. We're going to practice a bit for some band nine. And uh, this material is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there. Check out our videos, practice exams, courses. And for general IELTS, check us out at G ieltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of materials to help you prepare and be ready for your next exam. Our websites look like this. This is the academic one here. Click that big red button to join the premium package. And this is the general one here with the green background. Click that big red button to join us there. Hi, Ferdobs. Hi, Mahi. Uh, if you haven't done this yet, make sure to uh, install our apps and link them to the websites. So Academic IELTS Help app links to aehelp.com and General IELTS Help app links to uh, gieltshelp.com. And of course, uh, if you have any questions, uh, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. And um, if you're looking for our exam books in hard copy version, you can find those books on Amazon. Just search for A Helps Academic IELTS or GE Helps General IELTS. All right, everyone. So uh, reading, let's get into it. Uh, this is our reading passage for the day. It's close to home for me. As many of you know, I'm Canadian. And this passage is a bit of Canadian culture for you today. So uh, here we go. With today's reading passage, it's section three. Uh, it's uh, coming from one of our general IELTS exams, but again, section three in the general IELTS and the reading passages in the academic IELTS are very, very similar. So you can absolutely uh, use those regardless of which exam version you're studying for. Section one and two of general IELTS is quite different. So pay attention to that from the academic, but section three is very similar. Hi, Maksud. All right, so here we go. Uh, let's take a look at this title, Marathon of Hope, The Incredible Story of Terry Fox. All right, so what kind of information can we understand and predict from this title? So if we look at the words carefully, Marathon of Hope, what do you think that means, Marathon of Hope? So what is a marathon, and why would the word hope be added to the word marathon. What do you think, members? So um, what could that be referring to, marathon of hope? Give me your thoughts. So uh, here, of course, it's definitely helpful if you know the meaning of marathon. For those of you who enjoy running, I'm sure you might have a good idea of what that means. So marathon of hope, what could that mean? Carolina says it's probably an incredible story about a man who overcomes adversity. I think that's a good thought, Carolina. Um, Carolina, instead of taking the whole title, um, if it's kind of tricky to uh, figure out, take the title piece by piece, especially when you see that separation with the hyphen, right? So Abhishek says it's a long distance run. Yeah, uh, marathon is, uh, I believe, 42.5 kilometer run, okay? Um, and we have marathons all around the world. Uh, big cities host very famous marathon runs, the New York Marathon, the Chicago Marathon, Toronto Marathon, Budapest Marathon. There's marathons all over the world. Um, so Rajvir says, uh, it's long, dis long uh, race to achieve dreams. Yeah, so hope, of course, means for some kind of a hope. 
okay so for some kind of um, a goal okay so running a marathon to achieve some dream or goal sure all right so we go back the incredible story of Terry Fox so as you said Carolina maybe a person who overcomes a lot of adversity absolutely okay Adversity means like a challenging situation, okay? Adverse means difficult and challenging, so adversity, okay? All right, so uh, if you don't have more ideas about it, then that's okay, that's totally fine. Uh, look at the questions, right? That's your next step. Just take a peek at the questions, see if that helps us to get some more information. So the questions are after the passage here. The first set of questions uh, are here. Um, write your answers in boxes 28 to 33 on your answer sheet. No more than two words and or a number from the text for each answer. So you should be using the information from the text. And then here uh, we have six questions, okay? Now clearly, I think as many members know, uh, this type of question, it's sh called short answers, and these will all be in the text somewhere. I mean, specifically, it's saying from the text, so that gives you the idea right away that it's found somewhere in the passage. So these are okay to read. Now, what do you think would be a good strategy uh, with these questions as you're reading them? So instead of me giving you this one, uh, what do you think might be a good strategy while you read these questions that can help you to figure out the answers from the passage quickly? Yeah, so Carolina says, okay, we should read these. Yeah, and what should we do with them? Yeah, very good, uh, Rajveer. So convert them into statements, right? Because you're not likely going to see questions in the passage. You're going to see statements in the passage. So what city was Terry Fox born in? Okay, um, so that one you would convert to Terry Fox was born in something, okay? And then the name of the city, okay? So now you're thinking, okay, name. And Carolina is saying, okay, visualize. Yeah, so you see baby uh, Terry Fox, okay? So you have a picture of this little baby running, little running baby, okay? Um, that will help you to hold the image while you're reading and then identify that, all right? Okay, good. Uh, now, um, the next question here. So, uh, what did Terry Fox attribute his survival to? Can you change that into a statement for me? So, just type the statement into the chat. Um, and while you're changing it to a statement, try to paraphrase a bit as well, okay? Because there's a good chance that it's not going to be verbatim in the passage. Verbatim meaning that it's not going to be word for word in the passage. So uh, again, what did Terry Fox attribute his survival to? Okay, change that into a statement for me. And then I'll let you know if we're kind of on the same page or if we have some different ideas. All right, I'll give you a moment to do that. All right, so uh, Carolina says, Terry Fox gave his life to. Um, yeah, uh, that's not bad, Carolina. Um, give for a tribute is a good paraphrase, so giving, okay. Um, survival, life, yeah, sure, it's okay. Uh, Beck John says, Terry Fox survival was assisted by something. Yeah, Beck John, that works as well, I think. Abhishek says, Terry Fox associates his durability. Uh, durability, Abhishek, for survival, I think is awkward for a human. Um, that might work for an object, but not for a human, okay? So uh, survival is a bit um, difficult here, okay? 
continue living would be a paraphrase, a definitive paraphrase. So continue living. Um, Nick Hill says the qualities of Terry Fox to survive. Nick Hill, I think that's a really nice one. Okay. Uh, endurance is okay, Abhishek. It's definitely better than durable. It's still not exact, but it's better. Rajvir said Terry Fox credited his life to. That's really nice, Rajvir. That's a very nice paraphrase. Terry Fox credited his life to. Uh, attribute and credit, uh, in this case, uh, as a verb, is a very good paraphrase, Rajvir. So credited and attributed. That's very nice. Okay, good. All right. So that's what you want to practice. All right, let's read the rest of these. So how often did Terry Fox plan to run a marathon during his cross nation journey? Okay, so here we're understanding that, okay, Terry Fox has this plan to run across a country. Okay, run across a country. And how often did he plan? So Terry Fox planned to run a marathon across a country each day running a certain number. That's how I would think about it. And now I'm also thinking, okay, this answer is going to be some kind of a number that I can use from the text. Okay. And of course, this kind of thinking is happening quickly. Okay. So while in Quebec, how many people in total lived in the camper van? So in Quebec, there were this many people living in the van. In which province did Terry Fox receive the most press coverage? In this province, Terry Fox received a lot of news media. Okay. What medical problem preceded intense chest pain sending Terry Fox to the hospital? Uh, these symptoms happened before Terry Fox was feeling pain in his chest. And for that reason, he went to the hospital. Okay, so you're thinking about this during the exam. You are doing it exactly like I am, of course, in your head. Okay. All right. So changing those questions to statements. Here we go. Um, next question set. Complete each sentence with the correct ending A to F below. So this is sentence completion. We have three questions and we have six choices. So what should we do here? Just a refresher uh, for some students and maybe a little bit of new information for our newer uh, members. So when we have this kind of a question, the matching sentence endings, it's kind of like a multiple choice in a way. Um, what do we do with these? So Jainil says, just read the questions, not the choices. Uh, that's not going to be helpful. Yeah, so number 34, by the time he had gotten to Thunder Bay, something happened. While he could not continue to run, he hoped for something. Terry Fox notoriety was increasing as. What's the definition of notoriety? What does notoriety mean? It's a nice word to add to your vocabulary if... Uh, you don't know it yet. There's a simple four letter word that can paraphrase that perfectly. Anybody know what that word is? Notoriety. It's pronounced. So when I say this, absolutely copy my pronunciation. It's a tricky one here. Notoriety. Okay. Notoriety. Anybody know what that means? That word it was something that was increasing. Obviously it's not memory. Ferdovs. Good try though, but it's not memory. The word starts with an F. The word starts with an F in this context. And it's got four letters. There we go. Very good, Jineal. It's fame. Okay. Fame coming from, of course, uh, famous, or I should say that opposite. Famous comes from the word fame. Okay. Fame. Uh, Terry Fox's fame was increasing or Terry Fox's recognition was increasing as, okay? So learn this word, notoriety. It's a nice word to add to your vocabulary. Okay, good. All right. Um, so we skipped those possible responses and now we have a few uh, 
multiple choice or a multi-multiple choice. This is an interesting question type that you might come across. Okay, uh, write the correct letter A to J in boxes 37 to 40. The writer mentions a number of honors that Terry Fox received. Which four of the following honors are mentioned by the author? Okay, so we don't read the choices because it's four from a lot. <laughs> so we have uh, four, ten choices. So there's six wrong choices here. Okay. So the question here is which four of the following honors? Uh, what does honors mean here? What do you think honors refers to? So what does it mean to receive an honor? Here, honor is a noun, okay? Yeah, Abhishek, very good. So Abhishek says it's kind of like an award. Yeah, or recognition. Okay, yeah. It's some type of an award, or Bekjan says some kind of a prize or recognition. Good, so that's all you want to uh, pay attention to here. So. Now, with this one, this is kind of a tricky question. We haven't talked about this one yet. Um, but what you're paying attention to here is four honors. So here, uh, when you're reading these, it's a good idea to take some notes. Um, but be careful underlining, okay? So it's okay to take some notes while you're reading. Don't stop to answer because you're not sure what will happen later in the passage. So... Uh, I always recommend students to read the passage before the answers. Don't answer while you're reading because then you'll break your concentration and it won't be effective uh, overall. It'll be slower as well. Okay. All right. So in uh, this type of a passage, we're going to read it here in just a second. Uh, but one more important point. When you're reading this passage, what would be a good way to visualize? So, uh, of course, as many of you know here, okay, I definitely should be visualizing this. Here is some guy who's doing this amazing run. Um, definitely, I should have a picture in my head. So not having the video rolling in my head as I read this would be a bad idea. So what would be a good way to visualize this passage while you're reading? What would be a good strategy? Bekjan's asking incorrect ending questions. If there are the same number of questions as choices, is it good to read? Um, yeah, that's a good question, Bekjan. Yeah, you might read them because obviously all of them will be in the text. I've never seen that, um, but it's possible okay, to, to do it in that case. However, I've never seen that, Bekjan. There's always at least a couple extra ones. Okay, so Abhishek says that in this visualization, it would be a good idea to be a part of the story. Um, Rajveer says, I'm running the marathon with him. Uh, Carolina, I like your answer. So Carolina says, why don't I just be Terry Fox? So I am Terry Fox. Yeah, it's just like when you're reading a book about some hero and you are that hero. So become the main character. That's the beautiful part of reading a story about someone is that you can empathize and you can actually become that person. Okay, so... Janiel says, I am Terry Fox. <laughs> okay, good. All right, so let's do that. Let's visualize why, while we read. Let's become Terry Fox. And then uh, we'll get to answering the question. So here we go. This is a reading class. It's for everyone. Make sure to read with me. Okay, so follow and read with me. Here we go. Uh, Marathon of Hope, the incredible story of Terry Fox. All right. Terry Fox was an ordinary person, a basketball player and runner from Port Coquitlam, British Columbia. Fox received the news in March 1977 that he had cancer in his leg and it would have to be amputated. Oh, that's terrible. Devastating news for anyone. In Terry's mind, he was happy to be alive. He felt he owed his survival to medical advances made in the fight against cancer 
and he resolved to live the rest of his life not resentful but thankful okay so here we're picturing we're terry fox it's a terrible event i lose my leg but hey i'm happy to be alive thanks to modern medical advances also i'm visualizing visualizing i'm a baby i'm born in port coquitlam now for some of you you might think okay well underlining this might help me um, and that's true. So in this case, it might help to underline these, but just be really careful with that strategy of underlining. It can break your concentration while you read, okay? So careful with that. Okay, uh, let's keep going. With the help of an artificial leg, Terry ran his first marathon in August 1979 in Prince George, BC. He came in dead last, 10 minutes, behind the closest runner. The important result, however, was that he could finish. One marathon was not all Terry had in mind, however. He wanted to run across the country, running the equivalent of a marathon, 42 kilometers, every single day. His mother was doubtful at first. Her sick son wanted to attempt a feat some felt was practically suicide. But Terry would not relent. He owed it to those who helped him, and he owed it to those who would battle cancer in the future to do his part. On April 12, 1980, in St. John's, Newfoundland, Terry began. Okay, so remember uh, when I was reviewing the questions, for a couple of them I thought, okay, we need some numbers here. And uh, here I have one of my numbers. Okay, so again, I don't stop, I just keep reading. When I'm visualizing and understanding this, it will not take me long to go back to that answer, okay? But I don't want to miss some of the trickier questions like matching sentence endings by stopping. So if I keep stopping and putting these answers into the questions, I might get into some trouble when I get to finishing sentence endings, okay? Because I don't know where those are coming from yet, all right? So I don't want to break my concentration. And like I say, when you see an answer, you will find that quickly. Okay, you don't have to panic about that. Is that clear? So is, is everybody kind of clear on why I suggest not to fill in answers while you're reading? Because you're going to be jumping around a lot between the passage and the questions, and it will become a lot of confusion, especially if you do that for three passages in the academic or five passages in the general. Okay, uh, you want to be sequential. You want to be in sequence. Okay, all right, uh, here we go. Let's keep going. So I see that, yeah, okay, that makes sense for people why we don't want to just jump around, flip pages. Okay, with his right leg dipped in the Atlantic Ocean, he collected two bottles of water from the ocean. One was to be a souvenir. The other was to be poured into the Pacific Ocean upon the completion of his run in Victoria, British Columbia. His goal was to complete the 8,000-kilometer journey while raising $1 for each Canadian, $24 million. He slept in a camper van donated by a car company. He ran in shoes donated to him, and he drove on fuel provided by an oil company. He was accompanied by his friend Doug Alward, who drove the van as he ran, and cooked the meals for the two. Terry's brother, Daryl, would join them in Nova Scotia. Okay, lots of information there. It's really visual, so just keep it in mind, okay? You dip your legs in the Atlantic Ocean, get two bottles of water, one as a souvenir, one to pour into the other ocean. You've got these donations to do this run, so keep visualizing. Okay, here we go. Response to Terry's efforts was initially muted. It wasn't until 900 kilometers, 22 days into the run, that the people of Port Ock Basques, Newfoundland, presented him with $10,000, which was the first big success of the journey. Difficulties were experienced in Quebec as none of the crew spoke French. By the time he arrived in Montreal on June 22nd, the Marathon of Hope had received over $200,000 in donations. 
It was while crossing the border into Ontario that the fanfare truly began. He met the Prime Minister in Ottawa on Canada Day, July 1st, and met ice hockey superstar Daryl Sitter, Sittler and Bobby Orr along the way. Media attention was nonstop. Okay, so here I'm visualizing the media attention, taking pictures, so keeping in mind that question that I read. Donations were ever increasing. Unfortunately, Terry's health was going in the opposite direction. Outside of a fundraiser, before I continue here, members, notice how this last sentence is that connecting, concluding sentence. Unfortunately, Terry's health was going in the opposite direction. So just like you write in task two, you see that same structure in these essays, okay? So from this sentence, I know that my next paragraph will have information about Terry's health going in the opposite direction. Okay, so keep that essay structure in mind because that's the way essays work and passages in the IELTS are essays. Okay, so outside of a fundraiser mandated stop in Montreal, he never took a day off. He had dizzy spells, shin splints, and cysts on his amputated leg. So these are symptoms, okay, I'm keeping that in mind. His endurance was suffering, exhaustion was setting in. Crowds continued to cheer him on, and they continued to run beside him and with him. Thunder Bay, Ontario is where it ended. A coughing fit followed by intense chest pain, and Terry was forced to go to the hospital. The cancer had spread to his lungs. September 1st, 1980, the run was over. Okay, so that was about his health. Terry had raised $1.7 million by the time he got to Thunder Bay. Disappointed he could not go on, he hoped the people of Canada would see his struggle and be inspired to donate. He was right. A Canadian television network organized a telethon in Terry's honor. And in five hours, over $10 million was raised. It is a tragic circumstance that Terry's fame and influence was peaking just as his health was about to strike absolute zero. Less than a year later, in June 1981, Terry succumbed to cancer. A nation mourned his death. Flags were flown at half-mast by government decree. Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau observed, it occurs very rarely in the life of a nation that the courageous spirit of one person unites all people in the celebration of his life and in the mourning of his death. We do not think of him as one who was defeated by misfortune, but as one who inspired us with the example of the triumph of the human spirit over adversity. So there you go, Carolina, triumphing over adversity. So here, the celebration, now I'm keeping in mind that concept of honors as I'm reading this, because I can kind of see that this is where all of this recognition is happening, okay? So I don't forget the information I read in my questions as I'm reading, right? That's important. Today, Terry's legacy lives on. Over 60 countries and 3 million people every year participate in the Terry Fox Run, a fundraiser dedicated to the man who demonstrated strength and conviction and courage of heart. Terry has over a dozen schools, 30 roads, a mountain, and an icebreaker ship named after him. He was invested as a Companion of the Order of Canada, the highest honor a Canadian citizen can receive. Terry was the youngest recipient in history. He has seven statues erected across Canada. Memorials stand in St. John's at the start of his run, in Victoria at what should have been the end, and in Thunder Bay, where the end came too early. Terry inspired a generation of Canadians and continues today to inspire millions of people worldwide. Terry Fox was an ordinary person, 
but an extraordinary human being. Okay, so that's Terry Fox and his incredible story. Uh, now, let's quickly get to those questions and start answering them while they're fresh in our minds. Okay, so here we go back to the beginning of our questions. Write your answer in boxes 28 to 33 on your answer sheet. These have to come from the text. Um, what city was Terry Fox born in? Where can I find that information? So now that I read, read this carefully and I visualized it, where can I find this information? So uh, if I can read the passage in 10 minutes, I've got lots of time to look back and answer these questions. I have about 40 seconds for each one on average. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're all saying that's coming from the first paragraph. Let's take a look. I agree, right? Um, why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't the background, the history of Terry Fox be in the first paragraph? So in the first paragraph, um, what's the answer? Give me the answer that we need to copy into our answer sheet. Of course, it's the name of a city. So I'm looking for capital letters. And the answer is Port Coquitlam. Tricky to pronounce. Uh, it's from my... Uh, hometown area, so that's why I know the pronunciation. Uh, Port Coquitlam, yeah. So that's your answer, okay? So you put that into your answer sheet and you're good to go. Um, Port Coquitlam, British Columbia, you don't need BC, okay? Because uh, the question always is asking what city, okay? The city is called Port Coquitlam, the province is called British Columbia, okay? So runner from Port Coquitlam, that's the correct answer, okay? If it's asking which province, it would be British Columbia, but then you would have to know that that's a province, okay? That's my province, all right? So Port Coquitlam, that's the city. It's not far from Vancouver. Okay, um, here we go. Next question, what did... Terry Fox attribute his survival to. Uh, where do I find this and what is it? Maybe some of you can answer this question without even looking in the passage. I still have this answer in my mind because I remember. Yeah, so Carolina says he attributed his survival to medical advances. Abhishek says same paragraph, last two lines. Yeah, very nice visualizing. I can tell many of you pictured that. So advancements in medicine. Now, if I want to check the spelling, so uh, especially since this is the third passage or the final passage, um, if you have 10 minutes to answer these questions, you have 40 seconds for each. So even when you know it's medical advances, just check the words and make sure you have the same spelling. Okay, so don't rush it. You're basically nearing the end of the reading section. So might as well check. Okay, is that clear? So don't rush them. The other thing that you can do is answer, and then if you have a couple of minutes left, then you can go back and check the spelling. Okay, because we still have to answer 10 more questions. That might take some time. So uh, I might answer all of them first and then go, okay, now I can check the spelling real quick. And I check the spelling and then I go, okay, I remember that was medical advances. Check the spelling. It's all good. So I go on. All right. Uh, let's keep uh, moving. So um, how often did uh, Terry Fox plan to run a marathon during his cross-nation journey? I think this one's fairly simple too. You probably don't have to search for this if you visualize this because I th think it was in the passage a few times. So how often did Terry Fox plan to run a marathon? Marathon is that 42 kilometers. How often during his journey? So another way you can think about it is Terry Fox planned to run 42 kilometers during his cross-nation journey and then a word there. Okay, so let's take that out. All right, Maksud says each day. Yeah, Nick Hill Pace says each day. Janiel says daily. Um, so here, if you write daily, 
or every day or each day. I also will give that to you, okay? Um, they'll give you all three. Even though it says from the text, um, it's an exact synonym, so they will give that to you. But if you want to be really on the safe side, then you should check that, okay? So I know I'm looking for that 42 kilometer um, word, okay? Uh, so here is the marathon, 42 kilometers every single day, okay? So every single day, uh, let's see if I can write three words. No, I can't because it says no more than two words. So every day would be the most accurate, every day, okay? All right? pay attention to the instructions, no more than two words. So every day, okay, in this case or daily or each day, okay? All right, good. Let's keep going. We're moving along really nicely, members, and with a lot of confidence, okay? So here we go. Um, while in Quebec, how many people in total lived in the camper van 31 so i hope some of you also visualize that van that they were uh, traveling in and how many people were living in the van um, during their time in quebec this should be fairly easy okay so the correct answer is Two, him and his friend, right? And then a third person joined them later, right? So while in Quebec, how many people lived in total in the camper van? Um, two, but I might want to check that. So I remember the van was donated and so on. So if I have a little bit of time here, this is one that I would check just to make sure that I'm absolutely right. And I remember that it was uh, somewhere in the middle Okay. So it says here he was accompanied by his friend Doug Alward, who drove the van and cooked the meals for the two. Terry's brother, Daryl, would join them in Nova Scotia. Okay. So um, Nova Scotia, maybe before Quebec. So I think uh, it could be maybe three. Okay, it's tough to deduce, but uh, I think two is your safest bet here. So I'm just going to put two, and then I'm going to move on. All right, it's a tricky question. Okay, two. All right, um, and then 32. In which province did Terry Fox receive the most press coverage? Okay. So in which province? Yeah, very good, Ontario. Yeah, that was easy to visualize. And if you know the spelling, then go on, okay? Complete the rest. If not, just write it, and then you can go back and check. But that was Ontario, very good. All right, number 33. What medical problem preceded intense chest pain sending Terry Fox to the hospital? Now, this... If it's a problem, it means it's just one problem. So what one problem uh, preceded his chest pain before? So Abhishek says coughing. Uh, very good, Abhishek, yeah. Uh, Carolina says it was a coughing fit. Yeah, so if somebody can't stop coughing, then um, it's a coughing fit. Uh, that's your safest bet, coughing fit. But if you put the word coughing, it's likely that they'll just give it to you for coughing as well. Coughing fit is the most accurate answer, but IELTS would give it to you for coughing because I think that accurately answers the question, okay? All right, so it wasn't cancer that sent him to the hospital, but it's a coughing fit. They didn't know that uh, the cancer returned uh, until later on, okay? All right, so far so good. Um, 
Let's do the sentence completion now. So the way to do sentence completion is try to answer first on your own and then pick the correct answer. So by the time he had gotten to Thunder Bay, what happened? Okay, I think there were a couple of things that happened by the time he'd gotten to Thunder Bay. Um, there was one really clear uh, point that happened when he got to Thunder Bay. So what happened when Terry Fox reached Thunder Bay, Ontario? What was going on with him? Ferdov says his health dropped to zero. Okay, so his health, con his condition got really bad. Uh, Carolina said he'd received a lot of media attention. Yeah, Abhishek says his health issue and raising lots of funds. Okay, that would be my um, answer as well. So which one of these do you think is the closest here for 34. His health was decreasing. His success would inspire people to run marathon. His failure would inspire others to action. His cancer was spreading to his brain. He was beginning to feel better. He had raised almost $2 million. What's, what's the closest and, uh, or what's the best answer here for number 34? Yeah, I agree, Rajvir. It's A. His health was decreasing, right? That's how that paragraph ended, okay? So be confident and then don't change it. All right. Um, while he could not continue the run, he hoped. So what did he hope for even though... Even though he uh, was not able to continue his run, what was he hoping would happen? Does anybody remember? what that was. So what was his hope? He was like, okay, I can't continue running. And if you're, if you were him here, uh, I can't continue running, but I hope that. Okay. So he hoped that he inspired many people is what Rajveer says. Yeah. He hoped that his run was inspiring people to become active. Okay. And continue donating. Um, so let's see here. So his health was decreasing. We've chosen that. Don't cross it out. You never know. It might be a better answer later. His success would inspire people to run marathons. His failure would inspire others to action. His cancer was spreading to his brain. He was beginning to feel better. He had raised almost $2 million. So what do you think is the right answer for 35? All right, many of you are answering B. Um, why not C? Okay, why aren't you choose? Why isn't anybody choosing C? It's a tricky one. All right, um, his success. Was he really successful in this case? I mean, he didn't finish the run. And the other question is, was he hoping that other people would run marathons? I mean, when you watch a marathon on TV, are we all uh, thinking to run marathons? Uh, careful, students. So when you see two okay, possible answers that are kind of similar, all right, um, you want to be really careful and you want to look at these kinds of details. I don't actually remember him thinking that he wants to inspire people to run marathons. And there's a logical flaw there too. Always think about logic, right? What was the goal of his run? What, what, was, what was the goal of Terry Fox's run? Okay, so keep your thoughts simple and logical all the time, always, okay? So what was the goal of his run? To what? Yeah, oh, it's exactly, to battle cancer. So then why would he suddenly hope to inspire people to run marathons? He wasn't running the marathon so that people would run marathons. He was running the marathon to battle cancer. So this doesn't make logical sense, okay? This wasn't his goal. Um, 
inspire people to battle cancer, maybe that would make sense, but it doesn't say battle cancer. It says to run marathons. So this is kind of an oddball answer, okay? Be really careful with those oddball answers. Is that clear? So his failure, his inability to complete the marathon, okay, would inspire others to action. This was Terry Fox's goal, okay? Uh, it's different what Trudeau said. Trudeau said that he didn't really fail, okay, because he inspired people. Uh, but that's Trudeau, the prime minister. That's different. So don't confuse people in the passage. So don't confuse Terry Fox with the prime minister Trudeau and what he says about Terry Fox, okay? All right, so C is the correct answer here. All right, number 36. And Terry Fox's notoriety was increasing as, I think we can all get this one, okay? So Terry Fox's notoriety was increasing as, so what do you think is the answer for 36? On your own. Don't look at the answers on your own. So Terry Fox's notoriety was increasing. Now we know the word notoriety is fame. Okay. Was increasing as. Answer this on your own first. So Terry Fox's fame or recognition was increasing as something else was happening. What was happening? This is why you want to answer these all individually. Okay. When you have this as, it means something else was happening. So Terry Fox's notoriety was increasing as. Yeah, so Carolina says his health was decreasing. Okay, so his health was decreasing, I agree. Okay, so his fame was increasing as his health was decreasing. That would be my most natural answer. Um, which one is the closest match to that one? Okay, so which one is the closest match to Terry Fox's notoriety was increasing as his health was decreasing? Hi, Sammy. Carolina says the closest match is A, not only because it's the closest, but it's an exact match, okay? So A is an exact match. Uh-oh, what's going on here? We have A twice, okay? So what should we do here? Welcome back, Sammy. So what should we do here? What's going on? What would be your first instinct? <laughs> Carolina says cry. <laughs> That's funny, Carolina. L-O-L. -L, you just made me laugh. Good for you. Um, yeah, <laughs> we have two A's. That's a problem. Um, his health was decreasing, I think, is a better answer for this one than for this one. Yeah, so Beckchan says check number 34. Okay, so Beckchan says let's go back to this one and check it. By the time he had gotten to Thunder Bay, something. Okay, is there something else here that would fit uh, well with 34? Abhishek says, I think 34 would read well with F. So I think take that out and change that to F. He had raised almost $2 million. Yeah, Ferdov says maybe F. Let's check out what's going on with Thunder Bay, okay? Thunder Bay is easy to search for because it's a name, and it's somewhere uh, here right away. I was able to catch it. So Terry had raised $1.7 million by the time he got to Thunder Bay. Aha, okay. I have verbatim here by the time he got to Thunder Bay. This piece here by the time he got to gives me a lot of confidence that my correct choice for these ones are uh, F, C, and A. Okay, so don't cry, Carolina. Uh, you want to just uh, continue using strategy and logic, okay? F, C, and A. 
okay? So this is a perfect example of why you don't cross out answers after you choose them because in these uh, sentence completions, and sometimes there's more, sometimes there's four or five of these, if you cross them out, you might actually be putting them in the wrong place and they might fit better somewhere else. So you have to be really careful with that, okay? So this was a really important point for these, uh, uh, complete these sentences. Number one, make sure you complete it with your own idea first and then check the answers. That's very important, otherwise you won't catch that, okay? So complete it with your own ideas first and then check. Don't automatically assume that one answer isn't better for another question. Okay? A lot of students lose one or two marks on these questions because they have the, the right answer but in the wrong place. Okay, So be really careful. Right? Okay, uh, does that make sense? Okay, So that's your strategy. Again, you've got the time. Just stay the course, stay calm, and stay focused and go through the steps as I showed you here. Okay? All right. Remember, IELTS for band seven, eight, nine is not just a high school exam. There isn't necessarily just one right answer, but you're always looking for the best answer, okay, for the best answer. So uh, you have to use a different strategy. Uh, you'll notice that uh, if you go to school in Canada or the US, UK, you actually notice a very clear difference between the tests in high school versus tests in college and university. One of the big differences in high school exams, there's usually just one correct answer. In college or university exams, you can have multiple correct answers and you're looking for the best answer. Okay, so it's a lot more challenging in this way. You have to use a lot more critical thinking. All right, um, here we go. The writer mentions a number of honors that Terry Fox received. This one too, I would um, uh, do on my own first. So I would try to answer as much as I can on my own and then I would check, okay? Sammy says, yeah, in India it's the same. Of course, in most parts of the world, I believe it's the same kind of testing system now, Sammy. Absolutely, okay? All right, so I remember there were statues, right? In fact, if any of you are curious, I walk past Terry Fox's statue in Victoria all the time. It's a beautiful life-size statue. I think it's a little bit bigger than life-size, but close to a nice bronze statue of Terry Fox running where his race would have ended in Victoria. Remember statues, some kind of order of Canada? He was the youngest person to receive that. Um, I remember some kind of a boat because that was really amazing for me that um, you have this big boat that's named after him. Um, and then, uh, schools and mountains. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Um, so mentioned by the author, he was the youngest recipient of the companion award. Um, I think I saw that the youngest recipient of the companion award. Um, but was it the companion award? I'm not sure. So maybe. Uh, he had a memorial erected in Victoria where he was to finish his run. I think that was there. So I think definitely the statue. Okay, I have to check this companion award. I'm not sure about that. Um, he had over 30 schools named after him. I don't know the number of schools, so I might have to check that as well. He inspired millions of people. That's not an honor, even though it's something that he did. He had an annual fundraising run named after him. Yeah, every year, 3 million people run the Terry Fox Marathon. So I'm really confident on that one. Okay. Uh, flags were flown half-mast following his death. Um, yeah, I seem to remember something about that. Okay, that's an honor. Uh, his spirit triumphed over adversity. So here I have B, E, F so far. Just kind of going through these and showing you how I would do this if I were sitting the exam. Uh, his spirit triumphed over adversity. Uh, yeah, that's great, but that's not an honor in his name. 
Uh, he had a memorial erected in Thunder Bay where he began his run. Uh, that's not correct because he didn't begin his run in Thunder Bay. He finished his run in Thunder Bay. So I'm paying attention to detail. So I know that H is impossible. Um, and then he received the Order of Canada. Okay, that's something that he got. So I looks really good as well. And he had a city named after him. I don't think there are any cities named after him, just some streets and mountains and schools. So uh, we didn't think about this one. Okay, so the only one that's kind of tricky that I'm thinking about is the Order of Canada versus the Companion Award. Okay, I'm not sure about that one. So um, it's A versus I. I'm a little bit more confident in I, but I'm going to check those names. They're easy to search for. Okay, so um, all right. So he was invested as a companion of the Order of Canada, the highest honor a Canadian citizen can receive. So it's not a companion award, it's the Order of Canada award. Okay, so I'm going to stick with I and then I'll have the correct answers. So B, E, F, and I. Okay, those are the right answers. Okay, so these are actual awards. All right. Okay, uh, that's it for this passage. Lots of learning there. It's an inspiring story. I absolutely encourage all of you to participate in the Terry Fox Run if it's held in your country. Uh, it's still one of the biggest single events in the world which raises awareness for cancer and funds to help cancer research, to cure cancer. So it's a very honorable uh, event, and it can even be quite exciting. And I believe you can run 10 kilometers, half marathons, full marathons. So it's not so much a sad story, Ois. It's a very inspiring story uh, to overcome adversity and to um, band together as humans and uh, conquer even the greatest threats. So uh, I encourage you to do that. Uh, that's it for this class, everyone. Um, yeah, absolutely, Rajvir. It's a motivational story, uh, and you will see Terry Fox's uh, image in Canada for sure if you're there. Um, hopefully, I will see all of you in half an hour for some speaking part three practice. You're very welcome, Nick Hill. Abhishek, I'm glad it was inspiring. Janiel, I'm Adrian signing out for now. I'll be back shortly. Much love. Bye.